Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Salazar. Very excited today, especially to talk to you, because we're gonna talk about comics. We're gonna talk about me making comics. And here is a little process that I started. I just kind of came up with this on my own, just thinking about new ways to work on comics. And really, it came down to one of these elements of, I didn't have the right paper. I didn't have any 11 by 17, but I had a ton of this 18 by 24. What the hell am I gonna do with 18 by 24? I could cut it, uh, but then I thought, let's do this. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about my little process. If you wanna know about me and my work and this particular book, Boaz The Long Road, I would say go to my Patreon. In the description below, you will see a link to my Patreon page. Some of these posts are free that talk about Boaz, my daily strips, scripts. Some of that stuff is free. If you pay $1 a month, you can read all of it. In fact, you just do it one month and then you read it all and then you're done. And then maybe like six months later, do another $1. It's okay, I don't mind. If you wanna read it, check it out there. You could also buy like Pariah, Missouri, some of the comics I've done. Also the Adventure Bear Squad children's books, that kind of stuff. So I'm excited to talk about Boaz. The Long Road. It's my comic that I'm kind of developing myself before I go and pitch it to people, which we love. We love pitching. So before I do that, I gotta get it all worked out. It is Elevator Pitch, Lone Wolf and Cub, which I adore, right over there, meets Dune, which I love over yonder. Love Frank Herbert's Dune. I love that 70s sci-fi, heavy metal stuff, Mobius driven, you know, I like that stuff. But then I'm adding this kind of a samurai, feudal, tribal kind of element that's like a lone wolf and cub plot of like the road of vengeance. In fact, I was gonna call it Boaz the, Lo the Road of Vengeance. Tell me, does that sound better than The Long Road? I was also thinking about Boaz the Demon's Way. I think it's called The Demon's Way or The Demon's Road, which is actually lone wolf and cub. Is that too much of a crib or not? You steal from the best. That's the rule, steal from the best, so I don't know. Okay, so why don't I flip the camera because I wanna show you my process of like what I did, how I'm making this comic, because I think it's kind of fun, interesting. I'm not saying this is the way to do it, it's one way. What I love about making stories is you can do it <laughs> any way you want. You could do it all analog, all on paper. You could do it all digitally. You could do a combination. You can do watercolor, you can do digitally paint, you can do paintings and scan those. You can, there's so many different ways, do it all in pencil, whatever, color pencil, crayons. It's up to your imagination. And as a professional or would be professional, it's about your process, maximizing efficiency, getting as much done as possible in the shortest amount of time. So Wally Wood said, it. that's why he was saying steal what you can, copy what you can, you know, cheat what you can, because it's all about time. Time is money, especially when you get past 30, time is money. So this is a process that I think is saving me some time. Maybe it's not. Let's try that. My phone's ringing. I'm going to ignore that because I'm with you guys. And let's flip the camera over. Okay, guys, this is Boaz. Um, the Con the constraint is 28 page comic book, like an issue one, okay? So the first thing I had to do was write the script. So I wrote the script and I write full on scripts, page, panel, breakdown, generally. There are some times when I just kind of go with what, I just go kind of a little more loosey goosey in the script because I know in the drawing, I gotta kind of come up with some action or things like that. So the action-y stuff, I just say, fight page one, you know, fight page two. And I'll basically just figure that part out when I'm doing the drawing. But um, this is the, the process. Write the script, part one. Part two, I do break down the whole freaking comic all in panels. I break down each page and each panel in these thumbnails. These are three by four inch 
little panels here, maybe actually two by four. Um, and these break down every page. So I had every page of this done in a, just a piece of paper. This is like a 11 by 14 or so. And I broke down every scene, every page, page composition, panel composition, okay? And let me just zoom this in a little bit so you guys can see. Now, you might not be able to really read this because you didn't draw it, but I, I can read it. So I can see what's happening here. And then sometimes I'll go in with some black just to really make sure I know my blacks, I know where my shadows are, things like that. I'm using non-repo blue, not for any reason other than I just had it with me. You can use pencil. I feel sometimes repo blue works a little better because then I can use the blacks over it and the blacks turn out a little bit better and it's just nicer to kind of do that little sketching. So the, one of the challenges I have, and I've, I've heard other artists have this too, is that sometimes these little tiny drawings are so good, they're like, oh, you just want to like scan this in because it doesn't translate when you go bigger. Sometimes the little tiny ones are really good. Like for instance, I really like the positioning of him right here. I just like the way that body shape is. Um, I don't think when I translated it larger, it was quite that good. So there's little things like that. So this is the whole thing. This is the whole comic. Here, you know, I'll do really kind of a blocky, but I really like this. This turned out really nice. Um, so there we go. And then here you'll see, I actually do a little bit more, you know, put in a lot of blacks here, just to kind of spot it in. Okay, so I basically, I have every page worked out. This is my roadmap. This is my blueprint. This is what I'm going to do when I go bigger, right? Sometimes I'll even work out like a scene. I'm like, I really like this actually. This one did not make it in the comic. But again, I like this better than the one in the comic. So here's a great, here's a nice little 3D image of like the bar, right? So there's some things I do kind of work out there. So I work out the pages on small thumbnails. That's step two. And then what, what I do is I do just some pre, pre vis you'll say, pre-production, whatever, costume design stuff. So this is where I'm just looking at like costuming. I kind of come up with some idea. This was like actually a panel idea I had. I'm just looking at different costumes and nothing really spectacular, but you got to figure out what your costumes look like, right? Clear nod to little Mobius, right? With the little helmet things, little hats. Um, you know, so these are just, again, little drawings to come up with. What do these people wear? You know, this is an alien world. So what's their dress like? So I went to different, you know, I have in my scrap file, a bunch of like ethnic clothing and, and dress from different cultures. And I kind of like grabbed some of them here to, to get ideas. So now that I have the costuming figured out generally, and I have the panels laid out, now let's do the pencils. And the big difference between this method and most other methods is that I do the pencils on this massive ass paper. Now, normally a comic book page is all done. When I say normally, I mean like pre-computers. <laughs> it was all done on 11 by 17 with an active area of 10 by 15, right? That's what these are. These are 11 by 17 papers and with an active area of 10 by 15, okay? So these are actually other pages of Boaz. I did the, the, the preamble prequel story, okay? So this is those pages here. And in this process, I actually did these in pencil, scanned it, blue lined the pencils, printed it, and then inked this. So a few back and forth steps, but I like this process. I actually like this. The problem is it just took a while because I'm drawing it all on pencil, scanning it, blue lining that to print it on paper and then inking all that. And I thought, man, that's just kind of a couple back and forths. And, um, and I just, I just thought like, what's a different way to do it? And I didn't want to destroy my pencils when I inked because sometimes I don't like my inks. So that's why I did it that way. So then I thought, well, I got all this freaking huge, massive 18 by 24 paper and I don't have any more of this. So I didn't want to order any. I said, well, let me just draw some craziness. So we went from this size to this little biscuit. Now this is massive. My camera can't even get the whole size of it, but it's 
It's big, 18 by 24. Now, um, this isn't the first time people were working big, right? Um, Chris Ware works really big. I don't know if he does this size. He definitely does like 13 by 19. He might do 18 by 24, I'm not sure. But he does 13 by 19. Frank Miller, when he was doing um, Ronin, it was 13 by 19. And I think actually Sin City is 13 by 19. So there are artists out there that do work in large. And I've always been intimidated by large because I felt like, well, you, you see the errors more, it, all that. But you know what? There's something freeing about it because I use my whole arm. I'm able to really move my arm more using my shoulder. I'm able to kind of get a little bit more of a gestural feel and it just felt looser. So this is what I did. I created the comic, all those using my thumbnails as my guide and went through each of these, right? And you'll notice these look pretty much like the thumbnails. Let me put them side by side and you can see what I mean, right? Okay. So you can see this here is that, right? Do you get it? Can you see this whole thing? It's kind of hard because it's so freaking big. Um, and so then I did this and this is kind of really loose, right? This is a kind of a really looser style. I'm just kind of sketching this in, in pencil I'm using one of those big graphite pencils. A couple times I inked. I have no idea why I did this. I just thought of it. So again, keep it gestural, keep it loose. And then I started thinking, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to digital ink this with the borders the way I like. I really wanted a kind of like a Chinese brush, loose borders, and digitally, I don't like any of those brushes to give me this kind of quality. So I decided to say, screw it, I'm going to ink the, the, the panels. So I actually ink these panels. These panels will be the panels we'll use in the final work but then these pencils won't be right so I did that as you can see and I'm just kind of like you know some of the stuff's actually kind of fun and I liked going this big on his face and I was able to really kind of play with this and really move this along I actually like that panel a lot um, you know I like this here I like this positioning this arm and this chest right there I like that eye right I don't really care for this or this but the certain things I really liked and oh man that little that kind of cool um, so this is, I did this, right? So now, oh, here's that position. So if I go back, I don't really care for, this one doesn't, doesn't kind of pop out as much as the other one. You do lose a little bit of that sometimes, but here's what it is. So now I've did this 28 pages now in this big thing. Now there's a problem and the major problem is, oh, I kind of like this every now and then I'll just think that's kind of cool. The, the major problem is I got to scan this bastard <laughs> and there is no scanner this big. You ain't going to find one, at least not at, for home use. So, and I just got this nice scanner that does 11 by 17. That was the whole purpose is I didn't have to chop it up. It's 11 by 17. I put this in and boom, I'm done. One shot. Well, guess what? Now with my new process, I effed it up and now I got to chop it up again. So the issue is I do have to like, scan this side, scan that side, and fiddle fart with it digitally to kind of stitch it together. That is no bueno, no fun, but that's one of the cons to this. Um, you got to do it though. I don't see another way to do it. I mean, I guess you could take photos on your camera and put it in. And since you're not really using these pencils, you can use that as a guide. I've not done that. It's actually an interesting idea now that I just said that out loud. So that's a that's an option, I guess. Let's now go to the computer to see what the next step is. Okay, so now we're at the computer. I've scanned those pages in, right? I've scanned it all in. Here it is. Here's the scanned page. And let me just put it max. Okay, so it's max. This is the scan page. So now what I do is I ink it just like you would, you know, anything else. Uh, notice the borders are definitely darker, right? Because that was inked. But this doesn't need to be this dark. But sometimes maybe I'll keep it. I'll keep that line. I don't need to redo the whole line. But let me just show you what I inked so far. So now I could take out all of the pencils, right? I could take it all out. Or 
I can leave some and I could just just change the opacity a little bit because sometimes the pencil adds a little bit of depth, adds a little bit of, of uh, volume to it. So I might keep the pencils on some and some I might just erase, right? I might just go over here and just erase this shit out of this, right? Like I don't need the outlines changing, but I do like some of the little details in here, right? So I don't want the outlines changing, but I do want a little bit of this extra little meat in here. So that's kind of fun. So this is my inks, right? This is my inks of him. Let's look at him for instance. That's the pencil. Here's the inks on top of it. I could take out the pencil and just have that, but I don't know, that's, that's kind of fun too. So I ink it, okay? And I, I fiddle fart with the, with the opacity of the pencils. Do I use no pencils, all pencils, or do I just black it and just go like that? It's a little thicker, who knows? We can play with that. Once that's done, then I do the last step, which is color. Actually, there's two more steps. Let's do color. So, pen, now this one, I didn't touch the, I didn't ink this at all. This is just straight, right? Yeah, this is the pencils, boom. Now I just, I don't add any, I don't really want any inks. I like it like this. Kind of reminds me of, uh, 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 is his name, uh, Cord Ner Nord? Uh, Gary Cord, ah, darn it. He did, he did uh, the latest Dark Horse Conans with Kurt Busiak. Uh, shoot, it's over there. I can't find it. Anyway, he used a lot of pencils, no inks. So now I color it, okay? And this is just another layer. I throw down some color and I feel I'll keep it like this. I don't need, we don't need more definition here. We're fine. It's fine the way that is. I dig that. Let me, uh, let me show you another one. So here, did I add any inks? I did add a little bit of inks. So I added detail here on his, his outfit, okay? Then after that, I put in my colors. And this isn't final. We're gonna still fiddle with this a little bit, but I thought that would be kind of cool to kind of show you the digital coloring. Now, you know I did Pariah Missouri all watercolor, all analog. I love that process, but this is quicker for me for certain things. And so I wanted Boaz to be digital. I wanted to have this look. Uh, and so we're doing that. Now the final step, which we're not really gonna talk about today, but we actually, do I have it ready for you guys? Could we, could we throw down a little bit of InDesign talk? Let's see here, do I have it open? We have Shangri-La. So this would be, this is, Shangri-La Estates, which is another comic I'm doing. This is more of an autobiographical comic. Here though, here's where we're doing this comic and now we're doing digitally the lettering, right? So this is the last step. This is not Boaz again, this is another book, but uh, you know, this is where I digitally do all the lettering and all that kind of bubbles and all that stuff. And the book, the in book creation, right? The book file. So that's, that's that. So. I'm really excited about this process. I think it's fun. I really, really enjoyed working big. I didn't think I would. I enjoyed kind of a more gestural feeling, the arm movement. I like being able to just loosely work on this and move this into a digital way where I might just keep some of this. Some of this like magic gestural stuff stays in the final product. And I like that. Uh, I want to keep it loose for this story. I want it kind of, I don't want it to be very heavily referenced and heavily kind of locked down. So this way works for me. Time-wise, I think it also helps me time because as long as I solve all my visual problems with my thumbnails, I can just go to town and just and go really quick, use both hands, just really make it loose. And then when I ink, that does take more like concentration, but then I get to pick out what lines I want to keep, what lines I want to go over with, with the heavier line and what I destroy. And um, yeah, it's fun. I'm really enjoying this process. There is the issue with the scanning and then there is the issue of these, all this freaking paper I got to deal with. So I could just chuck it, but I don't like to chuck stuff, not quite yet. Anyway, there you go. That's the process, my little new process. Excited to have you guys watch it, appreciate it. 
Thank you for watching and uh, let me know in your comments what you do. Tell me about your processes, what you like, what are some resources out there and uh, thanks a lot.